Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Manchester United take on Arsenal today at Old Trafford. It's going to be a raucous affair. The new manager bounce may be in so Arsenal have been in good form as of late and have a brilliant recent record against Manchester United with a number of wins and some famous wins to boot with Mikel Arteta in charge. We're here to preview the game, talk about what we think is going to happen, talk about a few key players, a few key battles in the game as well. Make sure you've smashed the like button the share button, and you subscribe to the Football Terrace and you've turned on the bell notification. I'm joined tonight by Man United fan and, of course, one of the hosts at the Football Terrace, KJ. We've got Jess here as well from She Knows Arsenal, the Football Terrace, Give Me Sport, and about 30 other publications that currently give her work. We've got Gunner King here. You all know him, big superstar on TikTok and one of the stars of Friday Night on the Terrace as well. And Dan Potts making his debut on the Football Terrace. How are you all doing? All good, sir. Cheers for having us. Yeah, looking forward Ready, to it. I say that. I say looking forward to it. If you guys beat us tonight, I'm not really going to be in in, in that great <laughs> in that great mood to be honest. I don't want to lose this game to Arsenal. And with that in mind, I do want to start with KJ from a Man United point of view for a minute. Ralph isn't quite in the job, although he's been at Old Trafford today. He's there or thereabouts. Are you feeling confident going into this game tonight against against Arsenal at Old Trafford? How are you feeling? It's a 50-50 for me. Like I don't know what to expect. Um Ralph not being in the in the in the driving seat yet is is concerning. Um just from a club point of view. It just shows that we should have done this a lot sooner than we did. They may not be able to control the the work visa timeline in terms of how long it takes, but they could have started the process way sooner to make sure that he's at least here by this point. So Nothing's ever cl clean and easy with Man United, but we're, we're going through it. Once he gets that done, we can hopefully uh, look forward to some uh, Ralph Ball. Until then, Carrick, he back in the dugout once again. One last ride, bro. One last ride, Michael. Listen to me. We just need you to do a job once again. Um, Arsenal are in, a, are in good form. Um, they've been our bogey team for the last couple of seasons now. So I just want a, a, a good uh, good result, a good performance. And... And yeah, and that's all I can hope for right now. I, I, I can't tell you how we're going to play, who's going to start. Hey, Ronaldo might start and then Bruno might get dropped. I don't know. A surprise. <laughs> surprise. Carrick might start himself. Who flipping knows? Who knows? Who like... knows? Yeah, can you imagine? In fairness, he's better than McTominay still. He's still yeah. going to be better than McTominay now, Michael Carrick. So he won that. Dan, like from your point of view, we will get onto Arsenal a little more later. Mm. When you heard that Ralph wouldn't be in charge, did that change how you felt towards this game? Or is it a case of you know, Arsenal have just got to focus on playing their game and almost ignore who's in charge at Old Trafford? Well, put it this way, Todd, I'd rather Rolly still be at the wheel. <laughs> so um, <laughs> when I realised that he was going in time, it's like we've had Newcastle and Manchester United that both got rid of their managers in time to play Arsenal. You know, you couldn't write it. So... We did all right against Newcastle in the second half, but the first half worried me in terms of our lack of creativity. And I think that we've got to try and improve the final third moving forward tonight if we really want to get the three points. When I look at Ralph coming in, I think that it will still be a lift because although Michael Carrick is there, I think Ralph's going to have the say on what happens, in my opinion. Um, the rumours are that Michael Carrick picked the team and did the tactics for the Chelsea game, but you certainly looked a, a, a different animal, in my opinion, in terms of organisation, in discipline, and some of the work rate looked a lot better. And I don't think that was because you dropped Ronaldo. I just think there was a lot of um, difference in terms of mentality going forward. So I have to say, I've never been a huge fan of Marcus Rashford. I've, I've never really understood the obsession with Marcus Rashford. For me, he's just Danny Welbeck that does a lot for children. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really understand how great this guy is. When I look at, when I look at the situation of Jadon Sancho coming on the other side, I think to myself, that is a player that should have been playing for me. And proved it. As soon as he went through, I thought, yeah, do you know what? He's, he's going to score. And he did. That's a player I think will be kind of uh, real danger for you moving forward. Um, so I think this appointment is better than people are giving it credit for because I honestly believe that what Manchester United need is discipline, which I think Ralph Rangnick will do. I think you will need a little bit more of the removing, removing of the culture, which I think is what he'll do. And recruitment is so underrated with this guy. And you've had, had 
I mean, we've had it bad, but you guys have had some shockers in terms of particularly at the defence. I mean, 50 for Maguire, sorry, 50 for Juan Bissaka, 80 for Maguire, 30 for Bae, 30 for Lindelof. Shaw was about the same. Fred, 50 million, really? Like, I look at that and think, wow, there's there's some bad, bad moves there. I think he'll improve that. So I wouldn't be surprised, though, if this guy's here for the long term. And, you know, you've already proven Manchester United, they stick by managers in terms of loyalty. Um, so for me... I think it's a, a good appointment and it's definitely put more fear into me than Oli at the wheel. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a good time for him to come in. Anyhow, think... Manchester United give him the long-term job, I might just cry, bro. Uh, well, it's such a typical long, thing. When, when you say long-term, though, do you mean as Worse. manager or, or running things upstairs? Uh, you're talking to me? I, I, I think, yeah. no, I think long-term, honestly, I think long-term he could be still as in a head coach. I honestly oh, believe man. that. I, I, listen, I think you want Poch. I think you want Poch. I think you do. Yeah, long term. I think you do. But if this guy does well, as what people think he's going to do, and I think he'll do well in terms of, you know, what I've just mentioned in terms of discipline and stuff. I think that if things go right, which let's be honest, you've got some of the players going forward for things to go right. I think if they do go right, you could be with this guy long to, longer than I think people are giving it credit for. Now, it might be that Poch is the guy and he's been agreed already. I don't know enough about Manchester mm. United's background. And if that's the case then, and Ralph stays in the background, I think that's even better for you because you've got yourself a great mm. manager, great recruitment and more understanding of running of the football club. But I just feel that if things go right for him, we've already seen you stick by Oli for a long, 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 long time. I mean, I couldn't believe he was still in the job. So I wouldn't be surprised if things go well for, for Ralph that he's still there longer than perhaps you're expecting right now. But a lot can yeah. change in football. I hear you on that. I just, the only thing I will take exception to is a Rashford thing. Rashford is six, sorry, seven years younger than Danny Welbeck and has already scored more goals and got more assists than him in his career. He's a, he's a lot better than Welbeck, but I hear you. I think Rashford's actually <laughs> someone who's good. I love Rashford. I love the geezer. Well, Even before he started feeding them kids, always rated him. And I think he'll be someone, along with Sancho, like you've mentioned, that under Ragnick will, it'll start to cook and they'll start to perform. And I think what I'm excited about is that we haven't had, for me, a proficient coach at the club since all these kids have really been here. They had He had LVG for a few months properly. Uh, and then he had Jose, who, of course, was a world-class manager, but not renowned for developing youngsters. And then we had Oli. And I, I feel like when you don't have someone that's a pro got a proven track record of developing young players into stars, and they don't even need to be world-class as in Champions League winning managers, just some coaches are very good at developing young players and our boys haven't had that. And I'm glad that we've, we've made this move now. And I agree with the, with the second part of what you said. I want R Ralph to go upstairs and be in charge of the technical side of things, a top class manager to come in in the summer and get things done. And the hope for tonight is that this team have a, a bounce. They, they, they respond to this. They, 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 they put in those extra yards and miles. They, they, they respond to the crowd and they work hard because Ralph Ratnick is renowned for not taking any prisoners, irrespective of who you are, what your reputation is, or even what your talent says you are. You know, it's not about, okay, you're talented, but you've still got a work card. You've still got a press. One of the most underrated things about Jurgen Klopp and Nagelsmann and Tuchel's systems is the work rate. Like I saw people mm. taking the piss out of Oli a few days ago saying, they put this speech out where he spoke about des desire and passion and work rate. And they're like, that stupid era is gone now. The United way is gone. It's all going to be about technical stuff. And I'm like, you're an idiot. The most important element of those systems is hard work, running, mm. passion, desire, fight. You need that with the technical side to be successful. I feel like people think that the technical teams don't have any heart. They don't run around a lot. They don't put a lot of en energy in. And I think we actually don't work hard enough. So I I'm really excited about what it's going to entail. In terms of, in terms of tonight, though, I ain't too sure about this game. And the closer it gets, the more nervous I get. You know, I feel like if we attack Arsenal, you're going to beat us. Legitimately think if we attack attack you and open up, you're going to absorb us because you're good at doing that in recent times and you're going to catch us on the counter-attack. Gunnar King, from your point of view, how do you think Man United will approach it? And, and, and how do you fancy your chances at Old Trafford tonight? I think United will look to look like this rivalry is the age-old rivalry of the Premier League era. I don't think United or Arsenal have it in them, no matter what the state or what how their chances are fared, to invite over this guest and just sit back. United are going to try and go for it. You know, like how cohesive that's going to be, I don't know, but I, I can't see them sitting back and allowing us to dictate play 
I, I also think if you look at the Chelsea game, I I think Ragnar's been in contact with Carrick. I think there have been discussions. I think it has influenced how you played in that game with Chelsea, particularly where and how you were pressing. And and the starting setup looked very Ragnik esque. Like it looked like a four triple two um in, in some parts of transition. So I expect you guys to obviously press us um very, very high up the pitch. Um and I think our chances are okay providing we're able to play out of that. I think that's gonna be the like the, the key part, especially at the back and um with party as well what sort of service we can get to Aubameyang. But I, I think I think the, the form we're in, we, we can definitely win this game. Um, but I'll take a point. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I, do you echo that, Jess? Do, do you feel confident that a win is sort of on the cards? Not like, oh, we'll be lucky to get it. Do you feel like you can come here, lay down that marker, and by the way, go fourth. West Ham dropped points last night. You go fourth with a win tonight at Old Trafford. How plausible is that to you? Um, I don't know. It really just depends on which Arsenal team shows up. You know, I think if we do get a win, it'll be hard fought. I don't think yeah. this United team is going to capitulate or crumble. You know, I, I don't foresee anything similar to what we saw, how like how we played against Spurs. They just completely fell apart. I don't see it like that because they need to be impressing this new manager. They, they have to. So they're going to be up for it at home, Old Trafford. Those fans are going to be wanting to see something different. So if we do win, it'll be because we nicked it somehow or we really deserved it because we played super, super hard. But – in the form that we're in, it's still kind of like, if we go down a goal, what happens? You know, if it's, I can't see a back and forth because we just don't score enough goals. So ideal, everything would have to, in my mind, everything has to go perfect. You guys have to come at us. We have to beat you guys, you know, kind of playing through you because there'll be gaps. And then we have to take advantage of the first chance that we get and shut the crowd up. You know, the crowd will get louder as the game goes on and the pressure mounts and that might hurt us more, you know? So if we do win, it'll be because we, again, either nicked it or we really deserved it because we worked really hard, but we're not going to run away with this game. But the one thing that I do take away from it is that it's not a free hit in a way, but it's kind of one of those where it's like, I guess if we were to lose, we'd still be in fifth, you know, one point off of fourth and have played Man City, Man United and Liverpool away from home already. So if you think about it that way, I expect this team to go out there and play because with a point or with a win, you go fourth, clean fourth, you know, but if you lose, then you're still kind of in the same spot. So why not go for it? I'd be more disappointed if we didn't go for it at this point, seeing how many teams drop points. So we're getting lucky. This is the second weekend in a row where all of the teams that are in and around us have dropped points and we kind of need to take advantage of it. But again, it's going to be a difficult game because there's a lot of outside factors beyond just what Man United is going to do on the pitch that could go against us, you know. So if we do win, it'll be difficult. I need I need Arsenal to go out. <clears throat> I need it. Because <laughs> if they if Arsenal do, oh I I I am more confident with the with the speed of, of Rashford with the with the clinical edge of, of Ronaldo and with the, the form that Jen Sancho's in, I'm taking those three against your back four any day of the week, personally. Like, when it when it comes to just running at you, like, straight, I'm taking that. I know Arsenal's back four have been, been in good form, but we, we can be, like, on our day, we turn any back four, like, just into anybody when we're in transition. That is one of the best forms of attack that Manchester United got. We've kind of lost it towards the end of Oli's reign, but we're slowly starting to get it back. We saw it started to see some of the transitions again um, over the last couple of games, especially with um, the Sancho goal. Yes, it was a Jorginho mistake, but the way that they both Rashford and Sancho were so quick onto Jorginho, anticipating something happening. If we can do that to Arsenal after a um, after a spell of possession. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to to what Man United could do. To be fair, but 
I just personally don't think Arsenal will go for it in, the, in that way, Jess. I generally do, do think it's going to be hard for sit back, soak up pressure and see what you guys can do on the counter. As long as we, uh, as long as we keep the ball, I think Dunny Dan and Bake starts. We um we could be in for we could be in for a good win. It, look, I, I hear a lot of what you're saying there. I, I said to Jess uh, uh, yesterday when we did the uh, the straight fact podcast. I'm, I think we're going to attack, but I don't think we should. So I agree with Gunner King as well. I think we will do it. This is where I want to see. I don't think Ralph Ragnick's stupid, and I know he's not in charge on paper. But smart managers, whether you're home or away, they don't care what the crowd wants. Fergie didn't care what the crowd wanted at certain times. Mm. Even when we play, I know, I know this. This isn't peak Arsenal playing peak Man United. We very rarely try to dominate the ball against you. Now we had two or three mammoth results, maybe two mammoth results against you in my memory at, at Old Trafford. There was, of course, the eight-two, and there was the five-one first half, the White York ha- like hat trick. Most of the times we played you, though, it felt like you had the lion's share of the ball, the majority of the play, and we almost played counter-attack against you at home, even because you were that good on the ball. And I'm using that as an example of when we've done it against you. But I feel like if you play a team, you're better off playing in a way that hurts them, as opposed to, like, the one thing, I know, like, Pep and Klopp, they play their one way and their one way only. And I respect it to a degree, but there are times where I've been frustrated with it, where it's like, well... Example being, it, there, was a, there was that period of like two years where Liverpool just beat, seemed to beat City every time they played. And I used to look at Klopp and uh, Pep and think, why don't you change something for that one game? Because you're losing them. <laughs> you're going out of Champions League or you're falling behind the league. It's like for one game, just change it. That's You could have won a Champions League if you hadn't have done that. If they'd have knocked out Liverpool that year, Liverpool went on to win it. They would have won the Champions League and you missed out on it. So I, I, I'm interested to know if we'll do that in the short term. I don't think we will but I'd be really impressed if we were actually sitting back and being a bit more pragmatic in this game and almost being a little bit, I call it sort of the Mayweather effect, just trying to entice you in and counter. Now, rivals will get annoyed. They'll say, oh, you parked the bus at home. You must be embarrassed. Not if we win. And if you try it and you lose still, or you try it and you you don't counter attack properly, it, it might look stupid. But I'm really worried about us opening up and attacking against you because that's where I feel like you're, you've been at your best. Because we're not. if we had an potent attack, like Liverpool, like City, like Chelsea, I wouldn't care because they've been able to beat you and beat you comfortably. We're not that team yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous about tonight, really nervous. But but sitting back, doesn't. I don't think it necessarily results in a better result for Man United because we saw against Chelsea that, yes, we were more pragmatic and we were more defensive, but the, the chances were still there. We're just fortunate that Chelsea stream bits off. If I know... Uh, Arsenal's attacking stats, and Dad will probably talk about it in a moment. That they're not that great in terms of the, in in terms of the rest of the league. But if we invite that pressure onto us, it might just be the day that Arsenal's shooting boots are are on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and I'm I'm worried about that. So Man United have to, I think, have to play the most balanced game that we've probably played in the last like six months. We need perfect balance of defending when we need to defend. And then put retaining possession and attacking when we need to attack. If we over lean either way to one thing, I can only see Arsenal getting a result out of us. Mm. Dan, how do you think Arsenal will set up and play? Do you think it will be sort of pragmatically, or do you think you actually fancy your chances of taking United on toe to toe? Mikel Arteta football, mate. <laughs> I can't even. I don't even need one hand to count the times we've come at teams. Yeah, we've come at Leicester and Spurs. And we're caught away through the season. So, you know, if we can beat Watford 1-0 and Norwich 1-0 and Burnley 1-0, then I don't know why Manchester United are fearing us massively in terms of goals. Because last time I looked, it's minus two and our attacking stats are down with Burnley and Norwich. So I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't be too uh, you know, nervous if I was a Man United fan with us going forward. Aubameyang's not on form. Lacazette, everyone seems to forget, but I believe he's a striker <laughs> and he hasn't scored either. So I don't really understand why it's always Aubameyang doesn't score and Lacazette gets away with it now because what, he drops deeper? No, he's still a centre-forward on 182k a week. I want to see him scoring as well. 
Um, so the way I see it as Arsenal to try and set up and win this game um, is to get the balance right. And I'm with KJ. I, I feel personally that, like he thinks with Manchester United. Um, and you'll come on to score predictions for tonight. And, and, and I think it will be clear why I've gone for my score prediction because I feel like we'll cancel each other out. We're, bi we're kind of polar opposites. You guys can go forward. We cannot. You guys cannot defend. We can. I don't expect a high scoring game at all. I think this is going to be a real tight one um, I don't really know any game this season and listen Garner King and Jess may disagree with me where I've been excited by watching Arsenal and think wow do you know what this is just exceptional to watch the teams that we've beaten have rolled over and died yeah Spurs every single team we've beat this season their managers got sacked because <laughs> they're absolute dreadful yeah count it up Norwich 1-0 manager gets sacked Lee uh, what was it Villa Dean Smith, sacked. Spurs, Nuno, sacked. <laughs> Watford, Ranieri, one game in charge. Newcastle, Eddie Howe, one game in charge. And now we've got Man United, who haven't even got a manager yet. <laughs> so I'd like to actually try. Anybody that we've come up against has got a manager. We either get absolutely bullied off the park like Brentford or Chelsea, or we get battered off the park like Man City and Liverpool. So, uh, uh, listen, we got. I think, I think it's Sean Dyche and Brendan Rodgers, the only two managers that are still in the job that we beat. Everyone else is sacked because everyone else beat them. So I actually want to beat somebody that's competing with us. So that's why I want to win tonight, because it will prove to me that we've actually shown some progress under this manager that everyone seems to love. I don't get it. I, I just don't yeah. understand this. Can I ask this question? I, I, you made me laugh with the way you were saying that. I want to, I want to ask you a question. I spoke about this on my show with Jess earlier and that I've kind of interacted with people on socials. I feel like it's an important game for Arsenal. Of course, in their, in their fight, to try and get back in the Champions League. Of course, every point matters. I think it's going to be a very close season. Do you, do you feel like the result against one of your contemporaries in the top six and being competitive and getting a result against them is key? Do you think it's, it's a mark of an improvement or do you actually think that that goes no way to showing any kind of improvement or corners being turned at all. Like, where's your head at with that, Dan? Well, I, I'm still very unconvinced by this by this process that everyone gets very excited about. Um, I don't really get it. I don't understand this process because this guy should have been sacked when we got dumped out for Villarreal by the manager that we sacked for coming fifth. So I don't really understand why we keep a manager in charge for coming eighth twice in a row. That, for me, is a disappointment. I don't see any progress at all. Now, this season, we're in and around where a lot of fans are getting excited about. Now, when you come fourth, you do know there's three teams that finish ahead of you. So don't get too excited and start getting the champagne out because actually it's not a massive achievement, especially fourth place against some of the trash that is, been, that is around at the moment in the Premier League. So West Ham, Manchester United and Arsenal are probably favourites, one of us, to get fourth, fifth and sixth, in my opinion, the way it's going. But when I look at the situation against those teams now, I need to be seeing three points because that to me is progress because you're competing with the, the teams that you believe you're going to be in and around. So when we beat in Watford and Burnley and Norwich 1-0, forgive me if I'm not getting excited. Yeah, I want to try and see how we can do against the pe people we're competing with long term in terms of Manchester United. And we've got West Ham at home in a few weeks time as well. So I'll be judging Mikel Arteta and this team and this young team in mentality to see how we actually are going to be competing against this. Because I honestly am just still unconvinced. And, and people sit there and say that I'm spoiled because I grew up in the, in the late 80s and the early 90s and the 2000s. But we moved to the Emirates Stadium to compete with Real Madrid and Barcelona, not Burnley and Brighton. So forgive me if I don't trust the process of a, of a Stan Kroenke of 16 years, where it's still the same guy in charge with a different manager implementing a young team. So my fingers are pointing more at the board and the ownership because I just do not see how this is the way to go forward with a young team and a young coach. But I'm an Arsenal fan. I'll get behind the team. I'll get behind a manager. But I need to see more personally. So I'm expecting a win tonight, Tell, because the way I see it is if you go to Manchester United and, and lose, you go into Everton with that massive amount of pressure before everyone starts saying that Arteta is going to finish eighth again. That's the problem. <laughs> and with the result Everton got last night, they yeah, might exactly. have a new manager in charge by the time you play. Exactly. Well. Right. Probably will. Manager, Probably be another manager point. for us. New manager bounce FC, bro. Look, look, I think there are large elements of what you say that I, that, I, that I agree with, especially in terms of the market it makes. And, 
you know, for me, I think it's big for Arteta as well, because I think there are lots of fans, a bit like yourself, that want to see wins in these types of games and at, and at times convincing wins or being competitive at the very least. So you can start to feel a bit more like a trusting what's going on. It's almost that case of, you know, one step forward, two steps back at time. And that support for a manager, I think, is key. When there is universal support, you can go through bad periods and get through them. I feel like I don't think fan bases sometimes realize the power they have, especially with social media. You, you, we've heard so many footballers come out in the last couple of years and speak about how the stuff they see and read online bothers them and gets to them. Sometimes it's deserved because they're playing awfully and fans have the right to criticize. I think these things, I think complacency can seep into dressing rooms through social media. I think I would give this famous example of why I stand by it. When you beat Chelsea in 2017 in the FA Cup final, I think you won primarily because Chelsea believed they'd already won before the get the ball was kicked. Everybody in their dog. Even I remember watching AFTV the whole week. Barring tie, they all said Chelsea were going to win comfortably. <laughs> like every pundit, every journalist, every news station. I remember sitting down to watch it with my dad and my brother. None of us are Arsenal or Chelsea that were there. And my dad's like, who do you reckon? I said, Arsenal winning. He said, why? I said, because nobody thinks they will. You know, it's almost, I got, mm -hmm. I got the score exactly right tonight in the derby. Uh, the, the, the last night, sorry, in the Merseyside derby. I said 4-1. And I said, I said 4-0 and changed the bet to 4-1 with Bet Victor. But I said that because nobody, nobody said it could happen. And I just find in football, when everybody says, no, this is not going to happen, or yes, it's 100% will, the opposite tends to take place. And I sort of feel like all of that is driven through social media now more than ever before. And I just think, Arsenal needs some results and good performances against teams that get the juices flowing. That will get far more people genuinely behind Mikel Arteta. And I think that helps everything for me. And it's the same for Man United tomorrow. A win tomorrow going into what looks like an easier run of fixtures with Ralph coming in, there'll be a feel-good factor. And that mood, that that, that feeling is 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 can be, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, contagious within a dressing room. And I, I think it's massive. I really do. Um, Gunnar King. Yep. I, score predictions, brother. What are you saying? What's the score going to be tomorrow night, my bro? I think it's going to be 1-0 either way. I, I think I don't think there's going to be more than a goal in it. Uh, which way it goes, I don't know. Um, but what I will say, though, about picking up results against United and Liverpool and Chelsea, and obviously you want to see that. Like You've got to remember, these, these, these kids weren't, they weren't playing together you know, like before this summer, you know, like I think it's a huge expectation to, I think the fact that we can even expect them to do well in this game shows what sort of progress they've made um, to the team or what, what sort of, um, you know, expectations they've exceeded coming in as players. But we got to be real with them at the same time. Look, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, right? Wenger got top four beating teams he should do. He didn't have a great record against the, uh, the big six teams, but he would beat a sufficient number of the teams that weren't playing well, the teams that are in around and below us, to get to that top four status. Now, top four is part of a process to get back to where we can challenge for titles because you do need to be able to attract the sort of players that only playing Champions League football will get you. And it's not realistic to expect to win the league this season. So looking at top four as a ladder up to getting to being at that stage where we can challenge for the title is where I look at it. I always find it's very difficult to realistically expect anything more from this season. Right? So we might we might not win against United. You know, I, I've... I don't want to just single out United fans because I felt Liverpool fans were doing the same when we played them. So many people are making our season about showing we can beat those teams when the squads that they have got are light years ahead of us at the moment. It just doesn't seem realistic. You know, that, like, that, you know, like we, from... we lose to Liverpool, we <clears throat> play Newcastle, we respond, we beat them. All, you look at the teams in the run between the City game and the Liverpool game, those are teams we should be beating or not losing to. We did that. If we can do that for the rest of the season, I'm confident of where we'll finish. So, the, the, the whole thing making it about can you beat the Liverpool's, Man United's, but all them people, 
is it comes from a section, not all of the all of the fan base, a section of the fan base saying top four is guaranteed or top four is definitely on. And uh, in my opinion, yes, I agree with you. You don't need to beat the other top six, top four teams to get into top four. But if you end up beating one of them, that makes your fight for top four a lot easier because they're getting less points. You're climbing above them. And then it makes it, uh, it gives you just more confidence to get there. So again, I don't personally agree your season rides on this game or rides on beating all those teams. But if if a section, the section of the fan base that is saying top four is a shoe in, we're better than this team, we're better than that team, you should start expecting results in these games. That That's why I think that like it's important to remember that people have different opinions. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, that's why when... For me, I hear what Dan's saying. Like, it is, you do want to, like, a, certain fans want to see us really compete with the teams that we should be competing with. So I get that. But when I looked at the schedules and the fixtures before we started, and I started to see what I thought that we could do, when I looked at City away, like even Chelsea, you know, those games, marked those as losses, marked Man United away as, like, maybe a draw or a loss because at that point you guys were looked like you were going to be a lot better than you are. And so actually had less points at this point in the season than we actually have now. So when you've already kind of marked it in a certain way and you're like, okay, well, before the season, I didn't necessarily think that this would happen. And we're ahead of that. For me, it changes my expectations and it doesn't allow me to, I've all, I've always been the type of fan that's kind of like, if things don't go a certain way, I just throw everything out trying to be a little bit more relaxed because I know that like we could lose to Man United and then turn around and win to win against Everton. And then things are kind of the same. So I really don't want to capitulate just yet because if we do lose to Man United, but then we go throughout the season and we end up in fourth or fifth, then why did I capitulate? Because that's, yeah. isn't that the grand scheme? Like, isn't that the most important yeah, thing is where you it, finish? It is. That's it more is. important than anything. So for me, yeah, that's no. why it's like, and I'm the biggest not worry, though, is what is say a Man United or West Ham just not dropping points. And when it comes to those two games, and it comes to that, that fire top four, being relaxed about losing to them is no longer acceptable. Because See, this, Man, this like, is if the you thing. look, uh, yeah, look at some of the teams last season that we dropped points to. So we dropped six points to Villa. We dropped points against Burnley. We dropped points to Everton. Um, you know, we've beaten, you know, some, some of those teams already. Um, mm. it, it, what was more the problem with our eighth place finish last season? We beat Chelsea home and away. We beat you. Um, mm. You know, obviously, that it was more those games. Mm. You know I mean? No, and I it, agree. I yeah, totally agree. Oh, agree. Games, I, I, I we do need to get some points, though. I'm not saying that we don't need yeah, to. Yeah, we do yeah. need to get some things yeah. from somebody. I think these are two yeah, different I, there is there is two different conversations. Yeah, and, and there's, there's actually, I think there's a third in that. And I think the third one is the claims. So again, I, I'm not speaking, uh, sorry, about all Arsenal fans, but then I like to. I'm a, we, we're a fan channel. We're fan media. So I will question Arsenal fans about the claims of other Arsenal fans because I want to get their take on it. It's not a. I'm accusing you of being the same. I get it every day, Terry. This Man United fan said this. What's your take? That's. I just think that that's such a normal thing. Growing up, following football, mm. be like, oh, my mate's an Arsenal fan. He said this. What do you reckon? So when I bring it up on my channel now, and was like, well, I don't think that. That's wrong. I'm like. This is just how football is in this country. We ask each other about the opinions of other clubs based on what other people say to us or what a pundit says. It's the same thing. So there's the, the claim from people. We've had a lot of Arsenal fans on the terrace that have said to us, our squad is better or more balanced. If you think it's more balanced, it still means it's better. It's just a roundabout way of saying it than Man United's. So of course, well, show us then by beating us and being better. That's one claim. And then there's two separate conversations. There's the season and then there's the progress. So in terms of the progress, so with this season, first of all, you're right. Losing this game tonight doesn't end your season. I think there's, again, two reactions to that. There's throwing Baby out with the bath water and saying, that's it, sack Arteta, season's over, which is stupid. And then there's the case of, I'm really annoyed tonight that we dropped three points. Now, depending on the type of fan you are, if you're someone that thinks the squad's better than Man United and the manager's better than Man United, 
and you drop three points in the, in your top four race, you should be very annoyed. But it doesn't. But we've got to this point now where you're not allowed to be annoyed unless you're asking for a manager to be sacked, which is weird. It's weird to me. It's it's gone that uh, people have got to a point where they're not showing, in my opinion, their real true feelings because they don't want to be any way connected to people that might be Arteta, Oli, so whoever true. out of their club. And I see it, and it's getting to a point where. I'm then getting triggered at the wrong people because I'm like, I can just see through your eyes that you're more annoyed than you're letting on, but you want to put on this persona of being calm. So there's a the season element. And then the, the main question, which I think is more important to Arsenal, is the progression. And you're right. Last year, you were dropping more points to the smaller teams and you had some better results against the bigger teams. To show you, Arteta's two years in. He told people he's winning the Champions League within three years within the space of the next 12 months, you've got to start marrying this together where you're beating the majority of the small teams and being competitive against them, beating, starting to beat your competitors again. That shows progression. So I feel like one, and you can't at any point discount progression because it's an accumulation. That's where I say, when you were, were where Arsenal were when he took over, the expectation should be to get back to winning titles, but not instantly. It was always going to be impossible. So celebrate the step change. We've gone from eighth to, to, to fifth, fifth to third. Celebrate those moments. But there comes a point where you have to say, challenge now or go. And that's what happened to Oli this season. He crumbled under that pressure and he's now mm. out the door. So and, I think that, and I think that this is what happens a lot with these conversations. And sometimes mm. it's, it, it can be on me. If I'm a host, I'm not maybe putting the questions across in the right way. But I just feel like there's a lot of deflection tactics at the moment from people to, to act as if whenever there's a defeat, it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And then when there's a good victory, can, it's like, oh, do it back. It's like, but can on. I ask you a question, it's though? It's together at the same if, time. If, we don't, if we don't beat the big teams, we don't beat not a single one of them. So we lose home and away to the three top ones. Let's just put them in there because you guys aren't there yet. Hmm. And we make top four. Has Arteta progressed or has he not? Yeah. I, 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 that's a good question. At that point, yes. You could okay. you could arguably look at that. But the, the point is, that doesn't mean when it comes to assessing the Man United game, that I, I don't believe that any Arsenal fan in their heart is like, I want to win, but if we don't, I'm just going to be re like relaxed. I don't expect you to go, Arteta's got to go. But I'm seeing people... But act like they're not bothered about it, and I don't understand it. And no one I don't can understand make it sense to me. I, I, yeah, I, no one can. I can't understand it either, and no one can make sense to me either. And I, I get frustrated with it because I demand the best. I've grew up, you know, being gutted in mourning, leaving Highbury, coming second to Man United, and now everyone's supposed to be happy that we're eighth two years in a row because we're going through a process. I don't get it. I just don't understand that that Nobody mentality. Asked you to be happy, to me, it's though, just Dan. like Nobody accepting said be happy. mediocrity. So again, so nobody yeah. said be happy. Nobody said jump up mm. and down. It's just when you look at this team, personally, when I look at the team, I don't think it's good enough. I don't, mm. you know? And for me, if we get to the end of the season and we're not in Europe, Arteta has to go. But I need to mm. wait until then. I went Arteta out early quite a bit. And he's no, still I, here. I, I, so that's I, why I'm kind of like, I, I just want to relax. But nobody, but, but what Dan is saying that. is like, there's... There's an in-between. Nobody's saying be happy, but then it's also like it's we're not saying be happy because we come eighth. But at the other end, we don't need we're not excited that we didn't mm. beat the big teams. If there's cr something in between that we could get to, nobody's saying you be I mean, happy, but on the other end, yeah, you know, there is a section there is a section there is a section of the fan base, Jess. Obviously, you and I aren't part of that, but there is a section of the fan base that are just accepting mediocrity. I'm sorry, there is because you get that all the time. Like this is, you know, this is what happens. This is where we're at. We sat to Naomi for coming one point off a of top four and getting to a Europa League final, and now it's like it's okay. Keep him in eight for two years in a row. He's gonna do it right. Come on, man. How long do we wait for this guy to yeah. get, to get better? So for me, you know, he's yeah, sorry, KJ, just quickly. Yeah, for me, it is, it is, you know, no more excuses for me. It's no longer the players. He's, he's signed 16 now. This is all about him. So for me, top four for me would be a progress, 100%, just like you say, 100% that's progress because he ain't eighth. But if I'm, if I'm coming much below that, and it depends on how many points and stuff and what, how we're playing... I, I need to be. I need to see more. I just need to see more. And, and if we, if I see yeah, more sorry. and we get fourth, I'm all good. My, my view is this: if there's no emotional reaction to losing, 
because it's not good important in the grand scheme of things. There should be equally little emotion from a, the season point of view to winning the game because it's well, mm. so it's only three points that are not that important in the grand scheme of things. There won't Great be. Point. That's why I don't believe people when I, I look at this again. I'm not looking for extremities. I'm not looking for everyone to phone into the show or to go on their Twitter account and say, "I'll oh, tear <laughs> out if you lose one nil in a in a tight game." I'm looking for, I'm really gutted because I think we could have beaten United in this way, that way. I've just seen a few reactions recently where I'm watching it going, these people look, it reminds me of the film Get Out. Um, they're speaking, but you can see behind the eyes that they, they don't believe what they're saying. And I'm like, where's this doctrine come from? Where's this? I don't understand it. Like it's come from people that a month ago were speaking so differently about Arsenal. And I'm intrigued, but I'm more intrigued by it than I am annoyed by it. I'm like, where is this? When again, before the Liverpool game, a number of people were saying it. It was like, this is the game where we will be competitive. This is the game where the world will see our, our progression and our growth. To Arsenal. This is yeah. what certain Arsenal fans were saying. And then what? they lose it. And they were like, actually, the bounce back's more important than the performance in this. That's why I don't believe, not necessarily you, Jess, but that's why I don't believe certain Arsenal fans that are painting this picture at the moment that, this game is just not that important in the grand scheme of their season and moving forward. Because two weeks ago, away at Anfield was going to be their their curtain reveal moment to the what you know, like stars in their eyes tonight, Matthew. I'm going to be, and then they come out as as this peak team again. That that's just and that it's just every two weeks the can is kicked and it's a different narrative. And I'm I'm actually finding it quite entertaining. You know, I really am. I'm sort of like, I'm, you'll, beat, you'll beat Man United and I, I, I can't, part of me wants you to beat Man United because I'm sure then the narrative will be this actually was a key pivotal moment in the progression under the club and you'll see it and then I'll sit there and go, I thought it weren't important and you'll be like, Terry, you're yeah, hating. But, Calm down, but, Terry, you're hating. That's, that's, like, that's oh, my, my question is this, as, if you, <laughs> as Arsenal fans, if you saw Man United fans lose to you guys and then just say, oh, well, it doesn't matter because Carrick's not the manager. We're not going to play like this anymore. We've got Ragnick coming in. It's going to take time to do the. Wouldn't you guys feel like, well, hold up, you guys? No, because that's what that's what the Man United fans are going to do anyway. Because there's always a section of the fan base. No, there there will like if we beat you guys, there will be a section of your fan base that will use something to make it not important. A lot of fans do that. Do you believe them? Do you think they're being truthful? I but I guess because I don't really care. Like you know, it's like. If that's how they cope, then that's how they go. You know, it is what it is. And I don't know them mm, enough to tell them what they, how they I would feel. Say this, this is, this is, this it is doesn't rival bother fan me that channels. much. We're meant to, they were rival mm. fans. You're meant to get at each other. That's the point. Like, if we, what... if we, honestly, if we'd stop caring what our rivals say and do, we might as well stop watching football. That's, that's, Dan will tell you, like, you're meant to care what your rivals do. You're meant to try and get under their skin. There's even part of you that likes it when they get at you. It's like, oh, here we go. One of the reasons I was so annoyed at Oli is I've not been able to brag or wind anyone else up this season because I've been so bad. You want that oh, back. That's no smoke, bro. No smoke. It sucked. Where, oh, yeah. where is I'm not going to be on Twitter hunting them down and, and quote tweeting them and saying, I know that you're upset. Like, well, I guess... I didn't, again, I, I, you, you go to extreme levels. I didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> I'm talking I mean, that's what you're saying. Wait, that's, 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 that's what Justin really wants to go do. Go ahead and, and find them and quote about. <laughs> I'm talking about when we were on a stream and we're having a dialogue and we're talking... And we're asking, and I'm saying, like, do you really think Arsenal fans are not bothered? I, I know, I know, you know the answers. They you, really are. Of course losing they are. a game to United is always going to bother us, right? But I think, I think where perhaps I look at progress, and it sounded a bit similar from what Jess was describing, is the league position and the form. Like, mm. I think I, I see like the games as battles and there being like a war to finish in the top six or the top four or whatever. Are you going to win every battle to win a war? No. You know, like... Yeah, no, that's I, true. They're going I mean, to... I understand I mean, why Arsenal fans looking at, be say we, that. We need to make this statement to the world. We need to show that we can beat these teams. I'm not saying we don't have to make that statement. I'm just saying, is it a realistic expectation with these new six new players coming in, in and around the first team? Yeah, suddenly after 10 or 11 games to be going into those games against the teams we're trying to compete and be better than. And after that mm. small sample size, being able to go into those games and be like, yeah, we're, we're, we've arrived now. Like they know. Or should yeah. be later on down the line and should we be worrying about taking more points than we are dropping them? Yeah, yeah, I, know. I completely yeah. understand the logic <laughs> and the thought process and why, why the Arsenal fans do it. But my thing is, 
if again, if Man United fans were taking the same approach, would you guys react to saying, "Oh, actually, no, it's fine. Actually, no, they're they're right to not feel no. like this game means nothing." <laughs> no, you'd be like, "Why are you being like that?" You know, I think, I, think on, I think on top of that, for me to round this point off is this: I can buy that if you maintain that for the rest of the season and then don't get over gassed and over celebrate when you win one of those games. That's the only way I believe you because when you when you beat Spurs. The party was mad. And you know, Jess, because I said this to you, you're laughing, Gunner King. You were in the studio two weekends running, singing about it. When you won big we games. We beat our just... rivals. We were just, dis- oh, of course, on. we overreacted. Me... No, no, no. But yeah. I mean, let, let, me fin- let, me fin- let me finish. We beat let our fin- rivals. You know, let me so finish what like... I'm saying. You had every right to celebrate. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Please stop saying that I have an issue with you celebrating. I told, I remember telling you personally, you should be celebrating. Anyone not celebrating winning that game, it's a bit weird to me. Mm-hmm. My point is, when you've won big games this year, the celebration has been loud and proud. Then when you go to lose, it's it's not really that important the league position is. I only believe that if you're as equally as level-headed when you win. Uh, that, I've, 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 then I've then I'll say, believe it. Then I'll believe I've it. Got, I've got to say you're spot on, mate, in everything you're saying. Because the way I see it going into this game is I am going to be disappointed if we don't take three points. I'm not going to walk away and be really excited and go, do you know what? That was a really, really good point there at Old Trafford. Man United are there for the taking. They've not exactly been great this season. When I last look at the table, how many points can we go ahead of you? Is it eight points if we win this game or something yeah, crazy like that? Mad. That is a massive amount. That's a massive, massive target for top four. Eight points in front of Manchester United. Of course, Arsenal fans are going to leave feeling disappointed if we don't take three points. They're not going to be like crying about it if we get a point, but they're going to be disappointed. They're not going to be really happy jumping for joy because Manchester United are there for the taking. And, you know, when we do lose a game against a big team, I don't understand the mentality of, oh, well, they are a big team. I disappointed still. So I'm with you there, Terry. And I think that when it comes to some of the Arsenal fans that walk away, they're not being truthful when they say we don't care. Because like you just say, if we won 3-0 tonight, they'd walk away going absolutely jumping for joy, celebrating. Too right we would too, because we're beating United 3-0. So if we lose 3-0, yeah. I'm going to be pissed as well. I ain't going to be walking away. I think on top of that, the celebration wouldn't just be, I'm happy with the three points, the eight-point gap. It would be the progression, the movement, we've moved forward, we've done the this. The win, front. exactly. It would be all of that. And that's why, that's why I don't believe the majority. Some may, believe, may say that, but for me, it's, it's planting an early seed it's an insurance policy so that, that you've got, a, you've got a, a cloak of invisibility should you lose. To go, but I already said ahead of the game that it wasn't that important. I don't it's, think anybody on this stream thinks that, though. I think everyone... No, I don't, same way. Nobody I, said I it's unimportant and we don't care. I think yeah, those exactly. words are very but, specific. But, unimportant but, and not caring is different from yeah. it's not going to end my life. Like, you know, like I feel like that's... Yeah, but this, is, but this is a thing, though. Really. Like, that, that, that point Sorry. total that um, Dan mentioned... Eight, it can either turn to eight or it could turn into two. Now, if this is what my point was earlier about one of Arsenal's biggest worries is actually the form of Man United or West Ham or whoever. After that, we've got a 13 game run against teams that, if you look at them and Man United are firing, you can you could easily predict us getting close to maximum points. And that amount of points is like almost 39. So, in that period, if we beat you, close the gap to two. And then go on a run that we all know Man United are capable of. That is a big worry. And that's why yeah. I'm saying it should, like, as an Arsenal fan, we both need to win almost as much as each other. And I think on top of that, like I said, I don't expect anyone to throw baby out with a bathwater. I must make, I must I must say that say that on about uh that's gonna um uh, Dan will be back in a minute. That, that's I might be saying I must have said on about a hundred about a hundred different shows. I don't expect that kind of reaction from people. Um, it's just the, the playing it down is strange to me. But um, we'll finish the score predictions. We started them 22 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, Jess, what's your score prediction? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. You'll be happy with that. Will you be smiling with a 1-1? One, one? Take, I'll take a point because, again, a no, but I just want to say, like, before we even get through this, not one of the fans that said Ars- um, Arsenal are better than Man United always said you guys are we difficult know, we know to play. Nope, going to reiterate it just but one more this. time. So when I get there at the end, I'm not being asked, well, da, 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 why aren't you crying, you know, if we don't get the points? So I still think it's going to be a difficult game, 1-1. One, one, you know, mm-hmm. Man United is a difficult team no matter what. KJ, what's your score prediction, bro? 
Why did you just run over me? Like that? <laughs> I, I didn't love... before you finished talking. Sorry. I wasn't done. But okay, go ahead. I would love a, like a five nil drumming, bro, because these <laughs> men, these men, I listen, I've been wanting to smack these men for years now. But that's probably not gonna happen. The, the best I can ask for is probably a cheeky 2 0 keep a clean sheet, get get a couple of goals on this board and and go home happy for once and then hopefully start a magnificent run of form. That's what I'm hoping that's for. Fun. Uh, Dan, Dan's back with us now. Dan's back with us now with the score. What's your score prediction, Dan? Sorry, guys. My Wi-Fi just completely went down. Um, I've gone 1-1, guys. I think Aubameyang will finally get his goal. Uh, but I also think Cristiano Ronaldo will. So I think we'll cancel each other out uh, and go for a 1-1. Um, I'm, I, I don't want to I don't want to predict a loss, but uh, I, I, I can't say I'm confident going into this game. But I, I do actually think it will be a 1-1. I think both teams will cancel each other out. In, yeah, interesting. I mean, for me, I'm going 2-1 Man United. Um, I think we'll nick it. I, actually, I'm actually praying we nick it more than anything else. I'm fearful. I'm trying to be positive. Um, but I will be gutted if we lose. I really want a, 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 a maybe not so much a statement victory, but just something nice to start the Ragnar era under. It gives Carrick like a nice little... I want it for Carrick as well. He got a lot of stick for being... I, I've never seen a caretaker manager get stick before. To a point where, forget fans, I saw real football people that have been in the game their whole lives talk about why wasn't they all, why weren't all the coaches and backroom staff kicked out at the same time, ignoring the fact that there'd be no one to take training. <laughs> like, just the, honestly, and then, and then they'd be crossing United. <laughs> then they'd be crossing United. Why have you sat all your all yeah, your coaches? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the 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 again. Sometimes the the kind of analysis I see uh, uh, towards Man United, I sometimes sit there and think, why is nobody engaging? Maybe you don't need to engage your brain now with social media because it's it's banter FC, and it's if, if you can if you can point at a rival and laugh uh, without applying logic, uh, people do. But yeah, I'm gonna go two one Manchester United. I think it'll be a tough game though. I'm I'm really I'm looking forward to it, but I'm fearful at the same time i've got the weirdest emotions Boy, going Terry, through me for tonight Terry, you know about arsenal judge you know about arsenal judge uh, he loves to yeah. come in in these games man but Maybe. saying that he hasn't been as strong as 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 recent year uh recently so hopefully maybe i pray I pray. Viewers, we want your score predictions in the comments section below. Make sure you tune in tonight, 6 p.m. The Bet Victor Show will be live. Myself, Adam Charles, Lee S. in the studio um, ahead of the game. And then the live match reaction, taking your phone calls, getting your instant reactions to the game and reviewing on kind of the week's um, football. And then we go all over again at the weekend. It's a festive period, so football is going to be thick and fast. Uh, Jest, Gunner, King, Dan, of course, KJ, thank you all very much for coming on and, and giving us your thoughts and feelings. Smash the like and share button. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye.